Hello investors and traders, welcome back to the Trend Trader channel. So in today's video, I want us to talk about how do we make money in the stock market. Remember, we made a video where we said how can investors or market participants lose money in the stock market. We also showed you how much money we made in the stock market using our trading strategy. But in today's video, I just want to share with you the two ways that you can make money in the stock market as a market participant. It doesn't really matter whether you consider yourself to be an investor or you consider yourself to be a stock trader. But before we do that, make sure that uh, you click subscribe if you haven't subscribed uh, to the channel. And if you find this uh, video informative, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you share it so that uh, other people can see uh, the video as well. There are actually two ways that you can make money in the stock market, right? We're going to be going through uh, each of those uh, two ways. The first way is capital appreciation. What do you mean by capital appreciation? You buy something, the value of that thing that you are buying, it goes up in value. Then you sell that thing for a profit. In this case, we are talking in the context of shares or ETFs. So you can buy shares at whatever price and then sell them at a higher price. This is not a video that is going to tell you to buy low or and sell high. In this video, it doesn't matter where you buy. You just have to make sure that when you sell, you sell it at a higher price than the price that you paid for that uh, particular particular asset, whether it's a share or it's an ETF. Let's say, for example, you are buying Sasol shares. If you buy Sasol shares for 300 rand per share, we are not talking about whether Sasol is overvalued, is undervalued, is under or oversold, overbought. You are just buying Sasol shares at 300 rand per share. The only way for you to make money from the Sasol shares is that you are going to sell Sasol shares at any price that is higher than 300 uh, rand per share. If you somebody buys them from you for 310 rand, then you pocket that uh, 10 rand difference. That is your profit. So you see, it's simple. It's not that uh, complicated. The part where now it starts to become complicated is choosing those companies that have the potential to go up in share price. Remember, making money in the stock market is not guaranteed. So you have to ensure that you buy something that has a higher probability of the share price going up. It's not guaranteed. Investing in the stock market or trading the stock market is a game of probability. So you have to ensure that you are buying something that has the potential to go up. You see, the reason why some people they believe that you have to buy low and sell high is because it just makes logical sense. If something is selling at a lower price, it can go up and then you can sell it for a higher price. But if you have been following this channel for a while, you know that we don't necessarily buy low and sell high. What you always say, buy high, sell high. Well, we are not saying you should buy high and sell high. We are saying you can buy anywhere. Just make sure that when you sell that asset, you sell it at a higher price. That is how you make money. But remember, we said it's not guaranteed that you're going to make money. So for you to reduce your, your, your chance of losing your capital, you have to make sure that you use a stop loss so that whatever thinking that you had when you're buying a solid 300 trend, if that does not work out and the share price of Sasol, it starts to go down, you need to limit your losses. The way we limit our losses in this channel, we always use a stop loss. It doesn't matter where, how uh, far you're going to set your stop loss from your entry level, but we use a stop loss to reduce uh, our possibility of a loss. You understand that other people, they do analysis that they are satisfied with that the buying decision is a good decision for them when they make it and they have their own uh, risk management tools. Some people, they try to buy undervalued companies so that even if the share price drops, it still doesn't reach whatever value that they have placed uh, on that particular company. There's another way to manage risk. We're not saying that it's good or it's bad. We are simply saying that you do need to have a plan because it's not guaranteed that the share price is going to go up. So just to wrap things up, the first way of making money in the stock market is through capital appreciation. Selling something at the higher price that you bought at. We're not going to bother you with a short selling. That is not necessarily an, an advanced stuff, but it's not a, 
in the context of this YouTube channel. At this moment, we are not encouraging anyone to short the stocks or even to trade leveraged uh, contract for differences because they require a certain level of experience. But you understand that some of our subscribers and viewers, they do understand that topic. But the intention of this video is to assist the beginner investors, beginner traders that are not yet ready to use a sophisticated product, right? Now, if you want to follow how do we make money just by buying anywhere and selling higher, check in the link in the description below. You will see a link to an ebook. The name of the ebook is called Systematic Trend Following. In that ebook, we detail all the rules that we use to make a buying decision. Remember, we said that we are always looking for high probability stocks that has the potential to move up uh, in share price. So that ebook details how do you go about finding those companies, right? It's there in the description below. That ebook you can find on Gumroad. You will see the benefit of that book, but among other benefits is lifetime uh, email support and you're going to get support. It's an ebook. Uh, it also, the ebook, it's in a PDF and EPUB format. You can download that in whichever format that you want. And then there are some videos that help to explain the concept that uh, are in the ebook, right? Now let's move on to the second thing, uh, to the second way that you can make money in the stock market. That is by earning distributions or dividends from the shares or ETFs that you own in your portfolio, right? So now remember that when we buy shares, we are buying companies, businesses that conduct day-to-day -day business, they provide goods and services, right? If that company is profitable, they have to pay tax, they have to support uh, the cost of doing business. Then if they are left with profit, then the board of that uh, business can decide to declare a dividend. As a shareholder, you are not entitled to a dividend until the board has declared that dividend. There are some dates that you need to pay attention to, like the ex-dividend date and then the date that where you will be eligible to receive uh, that dividend. Right, so the current dividend date is the date that you need to be a shareholder so that you qualify to receive the dividend. Then the ex dividend date, everybody that buys the shares after that date, they will not receive the dividend, even though they are shareholders of that company. But every time you read uh, an announcement from the company, do pay attention to those uh, silent uh, date. So, this is how it works. The business conduct business, it provides goods and services that brings in revenue to the business. They separate the expenses, they pay tax on the profit, and then whatever remains of that profit, then the board can decide to take that uh, profit and give it back uh, to the shareholders, declaring a dividend. They can use all the profit as a dividend or they can use part of the profit for dividends. Then you will be receiving those dividends. Normally they declare gross dividends. At this moment in South Africa, an investor that is receiving dividend, they need to pay SARS 20% dividend withholding tax. If you use easy equities, I'm sure other brokers, they do this as well, but if you use easy equities, easy equities is going to subtract that 20% on your account and pay SARS on your behalf. When you get your tax certificate from easy equities, you will see all tax that you paid for dividends that you paid to SARS so that when you do your tax return, you can sort of consolidate every information that is there, right? So now the company declares a gross dividend, but what arrives in your account is a net dividend because you've already paid that 20% to SARS. But not all companies are created equal. Remember, we've got Real Estate Investment Trust. Those ones, they have a special regulation of their own. I don't want to say that all the Real Estate Investment Trust, they follow the same procedure. But those ones, you receive the total dividend. They call it a distribution because they collect a rent. It's a rental income. And then by regulation, they are supposed to pass at least or at most 75% of that rental income to the shareholders or beneficiaries of the trust. Remember, it's a real estate investment trust. So we're not necessarily shareholders, we are beneficiaries of the trust. And then as a beneficiary, you are responsible of paying the tax back to SARS. So just do keep in mind whenever you receive a 
distribution from your real estate investment trust. So remember, you said that the second thing is by dividends or distributions. So if you invest in an ETF, an ETF is like a mutual fund. Different investors, they pull their money, they buy all the companies that are there in that ETF. Then the, the company that is issuing the ETF, let's just use a Citrix, for example. You are buying a Citrix Top 40 ETF. You take your money, you buy that ETF. They use that money to buy all the companies, the components of the JSE Top 40. Those companies, from time to time, they will pay dividends and then they consolidate those dividends. Then they spread those uh, dividends in a form of distribution to all the shareholders of the Citrix Top 40 ETF or the holders of the Citrix Top 40 ETF, right? That is why we call that a distribution because we are not receiving a dividend from the underlying companies. We are receiving whatever income that the ETF issuer is passing on to us. So we call that a distribution. Then again, it depends. Some uh, ETF you pay that 20% dividend withholding tax. I'm not so sure about property ETFs like Citrix property ETF or OneVest property, but just make sure that you also do your own homework to check whether that tax has been paid on your behalf or that tax hasn't paid. But to simplify things for all of us investors, the easiest way is to buy ETFs using our tax-free savings account. In that way, we don't have to worry about tax as long as we don't exceed that annual threshold of 36,000 rand. So if you in invest 36,000 rand per tax year in your tax-free savings account, you don't have to worry about capital gain tax, meaning every time you dispose an asset, you trigger capital gain tax. But if you do it in the tax-free savings account, you don't trigger capital gain tax. And also when you receive a distribution from your ETF, you don't pay that 20%. So that is why we once had a video to say that it's better to start by investing using the tax-free savings account, meaning that you can only invest in ETFs because that's the only thing that is available in that uh, tax-free savings account. So once again, to wrap uh, the second way to make money in the stock market, it's dividends or distributions. We get dividend from uh, dividends from companies. The dividends they come from profit mostly. Then we get distributions from ETFs. Some other companies like real estate investment trust, like property companies, they will receive a distribution again. It's not called a dividend. Another way that the company can pay us a dividend besides from the profit. If the company there's something called a special dividend. Remember when we invest in shares. We buy ordinary dividends. I understand that there are some investors that buy preference shares and other kinds of shares. But whenever we buy shares, on average, we buy ordinary shares. Then the board of the company is going to declare an ordinary dividend. Because the preference shares, they also get their own uh, dividend, preference dividends. Of which, if you're an ordinary shareholder, you don't get that dividend. See. But now let's say the company, it has asset that it disposes, like we saw in 2021, RMB or RMI, they sold some of their properties instead of the board in reinvesting or the company reinvesting that money into other businesses, they decided to take the proceeds from the asset disposal, they paid it uh, to shareholders, then we received that fat special dividend that we think about it, I think about it. All the time because that was the best time in my life as an investor or as a stock trader i had shares there i received that uh, special dividend if you were part of the people like in the spaces where people discuss investment it could be twitter it could be facebook you saw people screenshotting large amounts of dividends that they received from that company so it happens even Sibanya at some point they did pay a 12 rand special dividends. Sometimes the profit are just too much. The, the market is just too good. Companies are printing money like it's nobody's business. And then they decide to reward you as a shareholder for the risk that you are taking when you invest with those companies. You see? So I hope that it's clear now. If you want to have an understanding of dividend investing or even how to find companies that can pay you dividends again go to the description you will see a link 
to our other ebook it's called the dividend manifesto in that ebook we detail how can you find companies that can appreciate in share price that can pay you dividend and how you can make dividends that can help you to beat inflation because look we love total return we want capital appreciation we also want to make sure that we do beat inflation right once we beat inflation then we are happy that we made money in that particular year there is no point returning four percent and inflation is five percent it means that you are down minus one percent so it's important to ensure that the returns that you get in the market they are total return they are above the inflation right by total return we're talking about capital appreciation we're talking about a dividend that is coming from your investment and also adding that it's important that you beat that uh, inflation so make sure that you subscribe and if you found this video informative make sure that you click that uh, like button and don't forget there are two ways you can make money in the stock market capital appreciation and dividend income so go ahead start looking for companies that can pay you dividends start looking for companies that the share price has a potential to rise because those are the ways that you can make money in the stock market